and welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with CJ Lou from the Fire It Up with CJ show. <laughs> If you've ever felt things going off track, off kilter, or even just slightly awry, then do we have the Roll With The Punches show for you. <laughs> Today we'll talk about getting back on track, on center, and rolling with whatever comes your way, even or especially when the sky is falling. <laughs> but, plus we'll talk about truth and synchronicity, creativity and soul expression, we lost CJ here, soul <laughs> retrieval, Skype challenges, the power of swimming, testing skates, late night uploads, run, run, where's the run, and why in the world I'll be sprinting to the car mechanics just after we finish this call. Oh, no! <laughs> so welcome <laughs> back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine! <laughs> it's, it's a... <laughs> Okay, what the heck's happening with your car? Oh, well, we've had just a series of challenges this week, and for us to be able to roll over the weekend, we need to sprint after the interview. Everybody has their challenges. Sprint after the interview. I guess it's drive, uh, since it's pretty quiet here this time of year, year. We get to drive many towns away to where there's a car rental place. Get the car rental, bring the car rental and our car, which really shouldn't be driving down to the car rental place, back to the mechanics because it has a, a leaking um front left differential get it back to the car mechanics and then we have the rental car for the weekend and then we see where we go from there but it has to be done boom 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 or we're carless for the weekend can you do and, a uber um, do you guys have uber you know i'm not sure exactly what there is around here but or i guess lift. the uber could take us to the car rental place yeah but you still need a you wouldn't want to like our weekends is when we shop and catch up on things that you can't do while running your show 24-7 during the week. So if we do that, we're going to be, you know, climbing trees with the raccoons trying to find some nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Come Sunday. But this is just all part of that roll of the punches. And I and, and my heart goes out to, to Enterprise in Jacksonville because I'm calling all around, unable to find a vehicle. And I'm told by the local Enterprise place, there are no vehicles. You're not going to find them. Mm. And I'm kind of no deaf. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, thank you. That's all right. Appreciate it. And I just start dialing and, and found, uh, found an enterprise that did. Wow. So, wow. Okay. So the sky, is that why the sky is falling for you? <laughs> the sky is falling because it's been raining. You know, we're not in Seattle. You know, we're on the East Coast, North yeah. Carolina. Typically more sunshine. We are on day four of rain of, of an expected five or six days. Jessica's health tends to go way mm. down, get whacked because of, of healing from the mold toxicity. She made it two days fully, um, which was impressive. That's a new record, two days of rain with, without um, getting knocked down for the count. And now she's, she's staggering. <laughs> We're on day four or five here, but she's still more or less on her feet. She's hit the brain fog. She's had to take the additional no. nap. And we haven't been able to get everything done, but we're rolling with it. And, oh. and we know it's, it's part of the process. So, so the sky is, in a sense, literally falling. It's not a big deal, but it has taken a lot of restructuring. You promise people things. You know you can't quite get that done in time. And, and I have my whole series of pookie rules, which is when she's tired, go to bed. When she needs rest, go to bed. When she's not feeling good, get off of the computer, go out or go to bed. But at those times, you don't want to push her. I don't want to push her. I don't want her to push her. I want her to do everything she can to get and be healthy. Mm. You know what? I, I just got advice. I have um, a health coach. I told you I have a year-long program. And um, I've been heavying up with this health coach right now because I said, I need you during um, starting Halloween all the way into January because when that time comes, it's just completely hellish for my health. And I had the best call with her yesterday. I'm just going to offer tips to listeners because I think that they may actually, this guy may be falling for their health and their wellness during this time. And what she said to me, she said, what are the times? She said, sugar, let's have a conversation on one thing, sugar. And then she explained to me that, you know, the way that our brain works is that it is 
during times of stress, we our brain like remembers like where it needs to go to get oxytocin and serotonin, which are feel good things. And so it goes, oh yeah, didn't we have like that box of um, chocolates that someone brought in to work? <laughs> That's in, 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 I think I saw that. Or like, what What about the chips that are around? Or, oh, I've had such a hard time of going to a holiday party. And how can I actually basically get those things neat, um, those things serve? So she had said, so what are those times for you? And I said, there are two times during the day for me. One is yeah. like right around two or three o'clock at night or in the afternoon. And then one is right after dinner. That's when I start going in scrounger mode. And she said, why is it around two or three? And I'm like, just because I'm kind of stressed out from the day. I'm also tired and just logy. So I want a pick me up. So I go scrounging through the kitchen for stuff that probably I don't need, which includes chocolate and stuff like that. So, um, so she said, you know what you need is you need a game plan. So instead of from two to three o'clock, what should you do? And I said, yeah. okay, from two to three o'clock, what I need to do is get a cup of tea, breathe a little bit. And then actually, like, lie down or take a walk, do something to kind of get my energy up. And she, and she said, sorry, she said, you need to actually find ways of driving your serotonin and oxytocin up. And those are the ways. Meditation, music, relaxation, calm, nature. Those are ways to do that. So instead of grabbing the chocolate... I'm basically going to go for a walk. And then in the evening, which, which is my other witching hour, I'm supposed to go to, I have a game plan where when that happens, I'm going to go journal about my emotional state because by that time I like didn't accomplish the things I wanted to. I have some type of emotions related to it. So journal those things instead of eating the chocolate. <laughs> and I just thought that was the best, you know, Here's why your brain's doing it. It wants mm -hmm. to find the least, you know, common path of least resistance. And here's a game plan that actually gives what your brain wants that doesn't involve indulging in stuff that's unhealthy for you, including a nap. Yes. Yeah, so that was kind of something fun. There, there are a couple of thoughts on this. First off, one of the things I've been doing that's really transformed my health this fall is, is I'm always big into to green drinks and, and everything healthy. But this fall, I seemed to struggle um, to get on top of my immune system. I was, I was always like on the edge of something and, and always feeling kind of sore. And so I went back kicking it old school each morning for the last month, month and a half. And it's been a radical transformation. I have a celery juice first thing in the morning. Mm. Throw, throw a whole bunch of celery. No, the organic stuff is sweet. It's not really it's not, I, I can't stand the bitter or sour bitter uh, celery, but the organic stuff is sweet and different farms have different tastes. And so you take a whole bunch of the celery, you run it through the juicer, and that's how I start. You're getting us all sorts of, of amazing phytochemicals and greens and minerals in there. And then later in the day, when those cravings start to come, I tend to go and put as much kale as I can into the juicer and make myself a kale and lime and some other stuff juice. It doesn't taste that great but the body is often craving nutrients. Oh, I see. It's lost and confused. Oh. And yes, it goes to what it thought satiates itself, but sugar begets sugar. When we go for the sugar pick-me-up, we either crash or we just want more of it, which is why we're scrounging around the house and the cabinets, which is why we don't have any here, because if Michael had some here, he would eat it. So I don't <laughs> even have it available to me. But then there's an, an acronym that I use, which is EMF. Energy moving forward. When we have a craving, when we have an addiction, uh, whether we go to something on the internet or to Netflix or to food or, or to a drink or whatever it is that we know we're addicted or in that moment drives us, if instead we realize that it's just energy trying to move through the body, we can ask ourselves, what is this energy going on? actually, I'm a little bit nervous and anxious because I didn't get X, Y, and Z done. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So the choice at that moment is either I take care of X, Y, and Z, or if my energy is over the top, is it a nap, a meditation, automatic writing? For me, typically, it's kick myself out of the house, get a little bit of body movement going, 
But once I can recognize it's an EMF going on and I can tag it, then just like she's saying, have these coping mechanisms, I have all sorts of things I know I can go to that are going to calm down that fire inside of me. Mm, I love it because I think that these are really practical things. What I'm realizing for myself is I need a game plan. If I, if I one, can pre-anticipate the problems, which, you know, holidays, extent, you know, people going um, on vacation, uh, stress is induced by parental visits and family issues. <laughs> like, you already know. <laughs> Like hell may be breaking loose for some of us. If that's the case, then growth opportunities. We growth opportunities with many growth opportunities. Yes, we will. <laughs> so like the UR can look at the preview and go, all right. So I know that these are things. Figure out what are your stressors, and figure out a game plan to address it. And then figure which I, what I'm hearing, right? And then and then I'm hearing day in day out, do a check. What where is my EMF? What do I need to do? Because when the sky is falling, it's usually because we didn't anticipate the sky falling. And when it is falling, we don't have a game plan for address pre-anticipating it. And then we don't track it day to day. So what we do is we engage in unproductive, unproductive unhelpful habits that just make everything worse. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the car is a, is a good example. So when this, when this transpired over the last couple of days, I'm going, well, I can take care of that at the end of the week after everything's done. But then I actually stepped back and said, let's let's roll through a game plan. Because normally in the past, I would go do everything I need to do and we'll take care of that over the weekend. But I was able to step back and say, wait, small town, quiet environment. Things are probably going to be closed. Let's look at things early. We actually got to the mechanics first thing when they opened this morning. Apparently, 737 was seven minutes too late. Oh, wow. <laughs> they're already small town. They're already three people ahead of us. Oh, wow. So, but at least I stepped back and said, particularly this time of the year, I need to get on top of the challenge sooner rather than later. And like you're saying, have a game plan or I'll be stuck for the weekend without a vehicle. Right. And so, yeah, it, it was not letting it go. It was front loading it. But most importantly, and that's part of what we're talking about, is to pause in the moment and say, all right, let's step back and figure out what we need to do to take care of ourselves or this situation. So in a sense, we're driving the situation more than the situation is driving us, or we're able to roll with it knowing we've at least taken some action forward. Right. Yeah, it's actually what's what I'm, what I'm p- p- picking out of this is that – You know, in the spiritual sense, we have no control over anything. There's like a greater purpose and thing that is happening day in, day out, right? Whether we may actually have plans, something may happen, you know, like I may have a plan to do this and, you know, all of a sudden my kids are like, I brought you this holiday treat that I made at school. Will you make, eat it? And it's like. All right, you know, like, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. have a plan, but know that ultimately there's some greater plan. But I think really what it is, it's how we're relating to possible things that happen. It's like, are we going to relate out of it, out of stress? Are we going to relate out of love? Are we going to relate out of discipline? And so how are you going to relate to potentialities that may exist? And there are and this is a time when a lot of potentialities happen, right? There's the weather, there's family, which, you know, brings up all sorts of many more variables. There's, you know, people being way more stressed out, which means that they also don't have good planning mechanisms. So your days get interrupted with all sorts of different things. So um, it's almost like, okay, know that the best laid plans may be all go, you know, to crap, <laughs> But but know that at least it's how you relate to it. <laughs> so I don't so know. This, that's another way. We were we were talking a couple weeks ago about me um, going to be doing some pacing for the uh, Myrtle Beach Marathon in March. Yes. And and I started into the running and I said, you know, best laid plans sometimes they go awry and interesting things happen when I set a goal. Uh, Health wise, absolutely fine, progressing into it well. But the family visit challenge things. And now the steady rain for four or five days and being about 40 degrees out challenges things. A vehicle I can't take to get to where I want to go to run challenges things. And I, I just have to, okay, this plan doesn't work. 
let's come up with an alternative plan. Well, nope, that one's not going to work. Let's come up with an alternative plan. And throughout it, just be okay. That even your alternate alternate may not work out, and you're just going to be okay with that too. The universe is a trickster. Spiritually speaking, these are all beautiful lessons. If you hang on too tight, and, and I'm going, all right, I'm not getting what I want when I want. What else can I get right now? Because it's just going to be all right, just as it is, no matter what. Right. Or so it's it's like, how do you react? Like, do you react? <laughs> or do you respond like, okay, the universe is giving me a broken car, horrible weather. Okay. Like. Tai Chi it. Tai Chi it. I think I mentioned it in a show about a year ago, which is like Kung Fu Panda 2. <laughs> And, and, and I do uh, remember that, you know, he's having this giant flame thing thrown at him and he, he takes the ball, the ball of, of flame and he spins it around and yes. then he sends it back out. And right. so when, when that ball of, <laughs> thinking of the movie airplane, when that ball of poo comes flying at you, <laughs> you can take it, you can circle it around and you can send it out as fertilizer. You know, it's funny. I, I think I, we said, we talked about this as well when I, after i'd met this guy who was talking about tai chi but he said when you have energy or power coming to to you if you kind of so like let's say a, a, tr a freight train is moving to me and i'm like no right like it's like That's i'm gonna probably hurt. i'm gonna get run over right but he said if the freight train is coming and you kind of like go with it um go with the energy so he actually used the example in this case because he was doing martial arts he's like if someone comes with you with a knife if you sit there and like put your hand you know if you kind of try to block it with a punch you're probably going to get hurt more than grabbing the arm of the person taking their hand and like gently moving them with the knife to some place that's safe where both you and the other person will be safe and so that's what comes up with me when you're talking about this like so like car comes up Michael, the car's gone. And you're, if you're kind of like, no, you know, it's going to be different than if you're like, okay, we'll just like change my afternoon plans. Jessica and I are going to have a wonderful drive in the rain <laughs> and have fun and, and have those enriching conversations that we're going to have during that, you know, hour to have drive in the rain, you know, like how can you take it, be friends with it and move along with it. And it gives us an opportunity to pick up more organic celery on the way to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh okay so what else is going on for you you know and i didn't send you my list today so so let me let me get that that over to you so let's talk about skating briefly because okay. this is interesting i wasn't going to be skating you know i was i wasn't yeah you told me you what you weren't going to do that and 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 i was not going to do it a, a, except that uh the pookie wanted to go skating Oh. And she goes, you brought in new skates for me. And she bats these beautiful brown eyes. Aww. They love looks at me. And she goes, who am I going to skate with? Aww. How do you say no to that, CJ? <laughs> <laughs> so you've got skating, swimming, and running. How do you have time for anything? And, 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 and late to. night uploads. Well, hold on, the late night uploads. That's in a whole different story. But, okay. But... But, you know, like you said, if you prioritize health, if you say, that's it, I'm getting in shape now, you'll find a way to do it. Yeah. For myself, with the show this fall in particular, it's microburst. You get three hours, uh, three, 30 minutes here, you get 40 minutes there, you take what you get and you go and you make the most of it. And, and so I went out that first day on a tiny little skating session with her. We had to turn back early because my feet don't fit in these skates and I was in so much pain. But I did the skate and then, then I basically ripped out the innards of these things and, and went skating in it again the next day with her. And my feet felt better. They, they really don't fit, fit me, but my feet felt better. And by the third day, it was actually quite blissful. I don't, I'm not the skater that I was before when I was sponsored by Rollerblade all those years ago. Yeah. But it'll come back. And that's actually part of this whole Tai Chi process is I'm going out. I'm not pretending I'm a great skater. I'm not pretending I even know how to skate at this point, but I'm letting the body find its balance point and mm. maybe find its center 
beneath me, going even the klutzy motions, even the strange motions, because I want to look pretty. I, 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 I love how fluid skating could be. And, and I used to have people like honking their car horn, throwing me down the window and, and saying, it's so beautiful to watch you skate because I, I really oh. honed this and would just glide. It was such an important part of my life and just gliding. And I don't have that yet, but I can start to get a glimmer, a glimpse of what this feels like. And so I just have to be with the experience, like you're saying, not fight it. If you fight, you fall in this case and just be with it as it is. And it is turning into something really special. It's yeah, I'm surprised. I've definitely surprised myself, but the light has gone back on for it. Now, I'm going to need some different skates, CJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Things are hurt. laughs> but it, it is like a ghost town here in a beautiful way, and the bike paths are radically empty, and I can use it as like a canal in, in the Netherlands and just skate mm. for miles, not effortlessly yet, but it will be, but it's very blissful, and I'm really, really enjoying it. So that was... That was a letting go into the experience. I had no plans. I I was done. The skates arrived. She tried on her skates. She she figured out because I got her several pairs. Which one fits her best? And she's like, "Let's go." And I'm like, "Uh, somebody else? Somebody that me?" <laughs> <laughs> you know what I love about the story is um, I'm thinking about the conversation that we had last week. And okay, so there's a there's this pa- evolutionary path where it's like, I don't know how to skate. I know how to skate better. I'm actually master skater. Now I'm like fluidly skating as a master, right? There's that one track of like where you are. And, and now you're like, okay, maybe you're not at that same level, but here's not where you are. Either. But what what is so interesting and probably the more important of the circles is that you're like, you know what? I mastered it. I feel good about it. I love myself, even though I'm not actually where I want to be. I'm mastering some other thing that I may not be exactly, you know, so you're evolving in a spiritual level about skating, even though maybe your physical level is not the same as it was and it will regain, you know, it's almost like if you master the emotional relationship level of it, you'll get to the mastery level. And in some way, it may not be exactly how you're skating, but in some ways you're skating more with life. Do you know what I mean? Then, then, yeah. It makes sense. It's definitely more of a spiritual experience. And there's so much, so much gratitude for, for it in all of its roughness right now. And then you just catch a glimpse, a few strokes that just feel really good. And you're like, but, (laughs) but it is, it is really a, a blissful letting go into the experience filled with gratitude for being able to do this. And, you know, I have to laugh when I go up a little hill and before I would just, you know, zoom, zoom up this thing. And instead now I push down on a leg and I swear <laughs> the ground pushes back at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the, here's my interesting parallel to this just as a different, not a, a workout thing, but just a mental thing is that about, uh, was it in last a year and a half ago, was it this summer that I took those four jobs or was it last summer? I last, think it was, it was last year. Last yeah. So year. it's about a, for a year and a half ago, I took four jobs on. Right. And, and in that process of going, resuming back to the work, you know, there's kind of the spiritual me that kind of like does the radio show me. It's like that all kind of felt like the synchronistic whole. Right. And then all of a sudden there is the work me which is the old Microsoft meme that I put in my little bag in the past and just has not never picked up. It was like, hello, I'm back. And the guy, no, it's more like, hello, I'm back. <laughs> and then it's like, ah, spiritual me, sit down. I'm No, it's me. I'm taking over. You know, so I had this kind of, this kind of hard driving Microsoft crazy, you know, that kind of person like, you know, sit down, spiritual you. It's me who gets the, you know, grandstand now. And during that time, I was like, I would spend so much time on work and, and somehow my spiritual practice just got cut, cut, cut again to like, all right, I did a five minute meditation. Oh no, I did a meditation when I was running. Is that enough? You know, it's like, um, that kind of thing happened. And then, and then what happened is I was like, oh my gosh, look how, how, look how this opportunity has shown me what I still need to do to grow. So and then I, you know, cut all these things off my plate. 
And then um, probably around last, this uh, six months later, I had another big work opportunity. And again, I poured way too much energy, but this time I was conscious of the amount of energy. So didn't put as much energy as I would have before. Because I thought, you know what, you matter too. And like you're investing too much. And if you are going to invest this time, then you need to actually be paid instead of being martyrish about this stuff. And I was like, yeah, I'm stand up for what I believe in. And I'm not like a martyr. I have to charge for my time. My time is worth something. And so I got that kind of self-love aspect of it in. And then yeah. come back full circle now, which I actually have this big project. And um they're asking me to do a lot and I don't have a lot of time to do it. And I was like, well, I'm going to first do the things I love doing and then I'll squeeze in whatever time I have <laughs> to do this project because Oxygen mask. I love it. It was. And so it, it just like flipped around where I'm like self love first and then go do some stuff. But every morning I have this week, um, dived into my creative endeavor. So I've been writing um, letters to various aspects of myself. And so I've been doing that and it just feels like when you, when you do put the oxygen mask on, it just feels like, okay, now I can give to others. Not in a resentful way, which was happening before, kind of unconsciously, because you're like, oh, I'm not getting paid enough. Or like, this is so much work. You have no idea how much time I'm spending. But it's, <laughs> But now it's like, Okay, I've given to myself. Now how I'm going to give to others. And I'm still going to charge because I just talked to this partner that I was just working on. I was like, I have to charge because this is taking me more time than I thought it was going to take to create. Like I'm doing this custom presentation and facilitation and coaching kind of package. And it's just taking time to do a high quality job. I said, I'm sorry. Just I'll have to see how much time this takes. And, you know, I'm going to have to charge you for it. But I'll tell you how much when I find out. We'll this is important for everybody to hear, which is charging what you're worth, not being apologetic about it yeah. and, and taking care of your own needs. Because I, I think that's something in our society um, that we overall, and some people are on the other extreme, and, <laughs> but as, as a general rule, we have a, tie, we have a difficult time saying no, setting boundaries, and asking what, what we're truly worth. Maybe it's because we have self-value challenges or because we have guilt issues. But it's so important to do that because I think it energetically changes everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. Um, so, yeah, so I've been doing that and it... I'm kind of like... It's interesting just like I'm evolving, right? Like first, like I'm out of control. At least I'm consciously aware of when I'm out of control and it's like... I love myself a little bit more. Now I love myself and I'm going to put myself first before the oxygen mask. And I don't know where I'm going to go when I actually go through the next loop, but it's like I'm evolving each time. And I'm not perfect, but I'm getting better each time. <laughs> Just like you're skating. To me, that's kind of the same thing. It's all you can ask. It's <laughs> absolutely all you can ask. for. So what, what, is, what is truth this week for you? Um, well... Um, as part of my creative expression, I did this. Um, have you ever talked to Phil Cousineau? Uh No, I think you may have mentioned him. Okay, he not. does the hero's journey, and he talks about how the hero's journey is applicable to the creative process. And yeah. more. And I went to his workshop when he was here in Seattle. He has a writer's writing workshop, and which was fabulous. I just felt so inspired afterwards. But I think actually the more important, I mean, that was really helpful. And another important thing that I learned from that experience and, that, and through more contemplation is how um, art, writing, um, your work product, anytime that you're creating something, through this radio show, this YouTube, this PowerPoint deck, whatever it is, it's an expression of your soul and how it's so important for us to... Um, one, see our creations as an expression of our soul, and two, to share them, you know, share them with love, and to share them, like if you have a poem, share it with someone, because if you don't publish it, then you have this beautiful gift that you're not giving anyone, and so it doesn't have to be like, you know, put a blog post or anything, but share your poem, or share, because that's what we're here for, is to, we have these beautiful souls, then we have our 
whose whose gifts we each have a gift that is unique as our fingerprint and when we share it through our work whether it's writing singing dancing you know chanting whatever (laughs) work products like share it and share it with love and share it with knowing that this is your soul expression and I think when that happens you start making you start dedicating time to things that are important so for me I was like if writing is a way that my soul wants to express I have to every day um, dedicate time to it and that was just a perceptual shift that came to me as a result of the workshop with Phil and the other thing that came to me is like I have to write and I'm going to meditate I don't need to meditate I want to meditate because it's something that is connecting it's like hello divine spirit I'm here today thank you for giving me so much I may not be here fully because I'm distracted but I'm here for you I love you I'm here for you I'm here for you divine and I'm here for you soul um and the, that's kind of one thing that I recognize this week. I, I think that's so important and, and it's interesting because I have that commitment. Although this morning I was at the car mechanics. That notwithstanding is an interesting synchronicity, which is for my, for we've got for automatic writing experience, that's with an editor right now. Mm-hmm. And I've been wanting to dive into my book, The Open Hearted Warrior. Mm. And um, I felt we had to take, well, Jessica and I had discussed it, we had to take one book at a time. But this desire to write, it, it was really strong this summer. Then it fell away, but it's still inside of me. And there are these waves, artistic waves, where you know now's the time. And then I got worried this fall when it wasn't there of a, well, is that going to be another book that I'm going to shelve because I didn't hop on the wave? And instead this week, I said, you know, what would I do if I had all the resources in the world? And I said, well, I would have a ghostwriter or editor on my team, and we would just turn out book after book after book. Just the number of interviews we have, the the amount of the wealth of of wisdom that we can share with people is massive at this point. And I said, all right, what one step forward can you take toward that today? Mm. And Jessica's like, well, the editor that we had for our previous books, she can get into your voice. She can help you fill in the gaps. Mm. Why don't you reach back out to her? Mm. And I did, and we had a meeting, and we're going to start moving forward on Open Hearted Warrior. I started writing again yesterday. I allowed myself to, I said, okay, we're going to start to test the floodgates. Instead of instead of the book came in, coming out, this huge long blog post slash newsletter, a beautiful thing, came out, but I know I'm back in writing mode. Mm. That feels good. Like you getting back into that writing mode, starting to get the words flowing on a daily basis feels really good. It's not necessarily how I want it yet, and I'm not sure exactly what it's going to look like, but I'm rolling with it, and I'm just allowing myself to start forward, hero's journey, on that path again. Mm. You know, it's um, when we were in the workshop with Phil, one of the things he said, I was just talking about, it's the, um, you know, spark. So you had the spark of like, oh, I've got to write this book. And then, and then it's like developing the discipline to do it. And then, you know, sharing it. It's, I think that's kind of a high level summary and like giving, uh, and when you're kind of in the part where you're like getting the discipline, getting mentors and people that will help you along the way. Cause you know, you hit these little dark sides <coughs> of the creativity process. And, uh, and the question was, how do you know when you're on the right track? Like, how do you know if your reverie, your, um, divine inspiration, your idea to write the heart, the, uh, heartful warrior, is that what it's called? open-hearted warrior. open-hearted warrior or for mine which I'm writing these letters to my soul um, and that's my work project right now how do I know if that is going where it needs to go and he said and and like whether you're like is this like a delusional dream or is this like the real thing and uh, he said that he asked uh, Joseph Campbell who he was a protege of and and uh, Joseph Campbell said you know how you know is because you have synchronicities, which is exactly what happened, right? Like, you're like, oh, you know, I'm thinking about doing this. And like, editor showed, like, I don't know if the editor showed up or she popped up or like, you met very quickly, right? I mean, that, it it happened. It it all flowed 
perfectly synchronistically in in a minimal amount of time it was just it was one of those meant to be even though the the call was a little a little challenged because she is an editor so she goes more into the head side i mean more in the heart side she suggested something that actually initially made me go eek but i'm going to try it this time which goes yeah. along with what you're saying so you're testing this you're looking for the synchronicities um, and and you've got to go with that energy behind it but she threw out a term that i'd never heard before and it sounds so heady but i will give it a try she said beta testing yeah. you can write your first few chapters and sort of like market testing where you take a market or you take a cheeto and you you give it to to somebody you see how you can take it to an independent group of people both in your um in your audience that you're looking at but also outside of your audience and get feedback as to how to sculpt this mm-hmm. and i had never thought of doing that before but one of the reasons that i called her and her, her name is sandy one of the reasons that i called sandy is because when i fully open the floodgates i don't know if this is with you or, or not um i get such a fire hose of information that it could really use direction and Jessica big concern for this book cuz she's going I'm not editing your work anymore I I love you very much I want us to stay married um, <laughs> I cannot be I, she has my voice in her head doing all the YouTube stuff she has my voice in her head with discussions she has my voice in my head hearing me through the studio she doesn't need my voice in her head as she's trying to edit my work it's too much and so she's like you know you're going to have to find somebody else to help you to structure and guide you along the way. And so I hiring Sandy will help me to do this, but also then having her take it elsewhere and get other people's feedback, I think is just what I need even though my heart says no, just let me be fully creative. Right. Just let me be in but there is a certain amount of reining in the creative horse that will actually let you bring something to completion that people want to read. and we've made that yeah i guess it is mistake before where we built something um something we're in a sense really proud of but also not so proud of because we built something that wasn't wanted by others mhm and and there has to be that balance you don't want to i don't think in today's day and age write the perfect novel that will only sell once you're dead right right well i love your opera so if if um it's the mentors and muses right like how do you keep the discipline to ensure that this is what people want. Like you may feel like this is an expression of my soul and they're like that's nice. Um can you actually adjust it slightly <laughs> and then we'll be able to adjust it better? It's like, well, okay. Like that's it, it, you know, it's like a, a a dance, right? Where it's like, okay, can you move a little bit to the left? Like I still want to do your tango, but I need you to move a little bit to the left or the right for me to dance with you. And so you have a mentor or muses, right? You have a mentor who's Tracy is her name what was her name Emily what was her Sandy. name Sandy Sandy You have Sandy who is your mentor saying okay I'll dance with you and we're going to have a couple other dance partners and we're all going to like oh no we'll move left no to no, right okay no that okay there <laughs> then you'll get to <laughs> and you'll get to creating a product actually faster which is if you think about what the soul probably wants it wants you to get your message out there as quickly as you can so I mean it's a different way of thinking about creativity but I like it. I think it's good. I bet it I bet it'll work. I'm excited. So I'm I'm excited to see how the floodgates open because now part of my automatic writing in the morning won't just be for me again. It it will serve a greater purpose. So mm. so I'm very much excited about it and I will just have to roll with it and allow in it. That's this whole process that we're talking about and be flexible. It's scary. Getting into the creative process it can be really is. scary. What in the world is going to come out? Is anybody going to want it? Is what's going to come out going to be of value? And you don't know when you take that giant lump of clay and you just go split down on the spinning table what's going to happen. Okay, here's here's what's so funny when you're talking about this. This is this is what I want to do. Get my knees up and go like this. <laughs> <laughs> and rock back and ball. forth. You know why? <laughs> because here's the thing since I've been I'm part of a, a writing workshop and I get that you know cuz people you get your you bring your stuff out and what what I didn't realize until the workshop is that you're kind of like here's my soul do you think it's beautiful and then and then you get the I don't understand your soul <laughs> what is your soul trying to say your soul's confused you know and you're like oh 
this feels so bad. You're like, maybe I need to cut. It's okay. So I think that that that's that's the that's the vulnerable part of of doing the thing that you're doing. It's really like in terms of being vulnerable, you have to be super vulnerable because you are taking like your most beautiful heart, especially given the nature of what you're writing. You're like aren't I beautiful? And people are like, yeah, your baby's ugly. (laughs) You're like, oh, you know what I mean? Like that's the couple of times that I've been in front of these workshop groups. They're kind of like, your baby's ugly. I don't understand your baby. (laughs) Your baby confuses me. (laughs) And it's, it's really hard. But at the same time, it's actually really important too. But it's hard. It really, really is hard. That's the hard thing about being creative and is to hear. Um, and and I think the, the question is, if no one loves your baby and your baby is ugly to other people, do you still create more babies? And I say, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Keep I on creating of, them. Uh, Lou, uh, Richard Lou, Richard Lou wrote Last Child in the Woods. And it's a beautiful story about getting back to nature and the importance of getting back to nature. And he, has a, he, he, he wrote the concept or put it in very succinctly, um, nature deficit disorder, that we're mm. all suffering from nature deficit disorder. I, I, I'm going to butcher his story. So if you're listening, Richard, I love you. <laughs> Please forgive me on this. But he had written, I don't know, 8, 9, 10, 11, maybe even 12 other books that relatively didn't take off until book 13, which went to the moon and beyond. Mm. And that's not saying it's going to take that long for all of us. And it's not saying it's going to be that long of a struggle or challenge. And, and, and hopefully there's some great joy along the way. But, but particularly if you're in a creative endeavor, put it out there, learn from it, put it out there again, learn from it, put it out there and put it out there. And, and if you and can enjoy the process, you can't go, well, this is going to be my New York Times bestseller. Oh, it wasn't. Well, then I should just quit. No, if you enjoy the process and feel that your soul is calling to get the words out out there, you just keep stepping forward that way, irregardless of whether you sold one copy, half a million copies, or 10 million copies. Okay, I have to parlay onto that story because because um, Phil Cousin, and, and, and if you go to his workshop, he's really he's just such a lovely person. Um, but he refers to him in the third person. He's like, Cousineau? <laughs> what, I, what someone said to me is Cousineau. But anyways, what, <laughs> what he said, um, and I, I'm sorry, Phil, if I butcher the story, but he had um, told me during our interview last week that, let me see if I can recall this correctly, he had written, it was a, a book that came and it just felt like it was, his soul was like, I need to write this book. And he, I think he shopped the idea. People are like, you know, poop all over, you know, like, no, we don't want to do this or, you know, like that kind of thing. And, and, uh, he couldn't, he couldn't, I don't know how he ended up getting it published, but it, it wasn't the path that he, in his soul felt like the right thing to do, but he published it anyways. And, this book didn't sell a lot of copies, but he, he published it anyways. And it felt like this is his soul's purpose. There was something that needed to be done. So uh, why this, this book needed to be published. And so he went to one of his writer's workshops or some out, outside facing event. And uh, some gentleman came to him and he said, do you know what my, um, he was a, a someone who was a, a vet. And he said, you know, my buddy just killed himself. He had PTSD. And um, I really had a hard time with that. And I picked up your book. And I think it saved my life. And he's like, okay, that that's why I wrote this book. To save one person's life like that, <laughs> that's like, you're like, okay, I'm done. That wasn't like, I know it took me two years or two years and a month or whatever long time it takes, but it's like. Good karma points. Yeah, it's like, it, it's just like, to me, if I did something and it saved someone's life like that, I'm like, I'm done. Like, that's good. Like, if this radio show helps save one person's life, then like the number, like five or seven years, I don't even know how long I've been doing this. It's all. It's totally worth it. Just one life saved is worth it. And um, 
so not only did he get this comment, but then as a result of this book having such a big impact on um, this gentleman, um, it's now a book that somehow made it into, he didn't do anything. It just found its way into the prisons. And cool. pris people in prison read this book and it's something that they talk about. It's something, And now the book is selling to this audience that he never expected was his target demographic according to, you know, big publishers' target demographic. But he... He published this book with heart and soul and it found its audience and he didn't understand what the audience was. No one else understood what the audience was. Everyone poo-pooed it, but he did it anyways and it saves lives. Now this book saves lives and I just I just absolutely love that story and people should go and listen to the interview because I'm probably totally butchering the story, but I think it goes to the, okay, Everyone poo poos it. They think your baby's ugly. You got to love your baby. You got to love your baby and care about if it is your baby, if it truly is your baby and it's meant to be born and you know that in your heart and soul, you still have to publish it. Even if everyone says it's ugly, even if people don't understand the baby, still do it because you really don't know what's going to happen after you do it. And if you don't publish, if you don't express your soul, then no one will ever see it. So true and important, and I think people are listening can blow that out in so many different areas of your life that, um, in particular, as we're coming up on the new year, whatever is that thing that you've been holding off that's, that's gnawing away inside of you that you want to try it, you're just not sure how it's going to go, you're not sure what it's going to look like, you can hear all the naysayers, you may get to step forward anyway. Yeah. Why not? What is there to lose? And what is there to gain? Right? Everything to gain. All to gain. Everything to gain. I, can I, and I know we're running out of time, but I want to talk real quick. So I had a solar retrieval and you want to talk about swimming and uploads. How are you going to fit this all in? <laughs> <laughs> the 10 second version. Swimming. We've got Jessica swimming again. I've been, she's been gnawing at me for years to take her swimming. And, and she goes, you got to teach me how to swim. And I've, I've said, um, I'm, you know, I'm a good coach at things, but I'm not necessarily a good swim coach. I, I mean, training programs, yes, right. but fine tuning technique, not the more beginnery aspect, but we got her into the pool. I, and I, I don't know why I hadn't thought about it all summer that our gym has a saltwater pool. Cause I don't oh, want to go in chlorinated nice. environments. We got in a, a, a loud, a total allowance, letting go, being in a cage place, not being out in the open water throw that junk out, swimming with her. I'm letting go. She's letting go. She got better without even swimming. And we're just having a blissful time oh. of, of letting go of what we thought was going to take place. And it's turning into something really special. So, okay, that's a swimming story. Uh, uploads, uploads, what's going on with that? The late night uploads is simply that this week, things have gotten out of pattern. And mm -hmm. so my usual early bedtime, things didn't take place. There's an error in the file. There's this to take care of. There's that to take care of just letting it go and being with it and not using like last night I was up really late not using any bandwidth on sweating it because right. there's the resistance of something not going right and then there's the resistance you add to it by trying to stop the locomotive right it is what it is just let it go yes you didn't get your stuff in okay some days are like that it's all good it's all good okay go CJ okay soul retrieval so in the process of honoring my soul I um, was writing, and in the idea, the spirit of you really never know where something's going. I'm writing this book that maybe no one will ever see. I hope that someone will see it. Minimally, see it. minimally, I'm actually publishing and giving it to this this group. So I figure like, okay, I'm publishing it because each week I'm sharing this with this group and hearing their inputs. And, um, and what I did last week is I was talking to my creative part of myself that I actually like just bookshelved when I was a little girl and have not looked at since college and the writing is a way of bringing her back out again yeah. and so I realized that in in really in the spiritual part it's actually called the soul uh soul retrieval where you actually have a missing part of yourself that's left in a timeline you go grab that self you like talk to that self you grab her hand and actually have her walk through the timeline with you and so I retrieved my missing creative part that I feel like I knew that she was there. I've tried to ask her to come with me. 
and she's refused until I actually wrote her a letter. So I I wrote her this long letter and I explained why I left her. I apologized for leaving her. I did a forgiveness poem asking for her forgiveness and forgiving Mm -hmm. myself that left her behind. And then I did a good parenting um, exercise where it's like, you know what? I didn't do a good job. You know, I've been asking you to come back and come back to me, come home, you know, instead of being back, you know, come home, it's time for dinner, you know, and she's just like, I'm still playing. I'm like, no, come home, you know, and she just want to come home. But this time I'm like, please come home. I love you. I am in a place where I can support you. I promise, you know, like all these kinds of things. And so I went through that whole process. And, and so had an, I not made the time to do that. Had I not written and forced myself to share this with other people and be so driven and disciplined to make that happen, I wouldn't have had this soul retrieval part. And I feel lighter, happier, more free with this part of me that has been in resistance for like probably like 10 years to join me, but she's back with me. And it's just so joyful to have her back with me. Thank you. No, thank you. My little creative part. And um, it just goes to show you sometimes you do something, you don't know what the outcome is. I may not not publish it beyond this group. Maybe I will. But the most important part from my perspective is I regain this part that I would not have done unless I was writing creatively um, and expressing my soul. So is there a way we can't go into full detail on soul retrieval right now but is there a way people can do this themselves or get in touch with that part of themselves i know i do an exercise where i'll have people walk hand in hand with their little child with their inner child how can people start doing this themselves yeah i think that there um there's books on soul retrieval that you can look up on the web and then um it's doing exactly it's like having a, you have to have a dialogue with that part of your soul that you, first you have to know one that it's missing <laughs> you need to know that it's like missing and lost two once you know it's missing and lost you need some type of process of retrieving it and there's a whole bunch of information on the web probably including soul retrieval but if you look at shamanic soul retrieval you can find it and then um oftentimes just think about if you left a child behind you're going to have to forgive <laughs> and you're going to have to talk to them as if you love them and make commitments so that they stay with you. So I, I would say at a very high level, those are the three things that need to happen. And so if you look on the web for shamanic journeying, uh, soul retrieval, and if you look on the web for good parenting, it's actually a concept, a psychological concept could good parenting. So go look at good parenting protocols, good parenting meditations. Um, I have my own, but they're probably one... And since we don't have the time, we don't have, you can probably look up that on the web and do it yourself. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've got to let both of us, of us go here, me to sprint for a car, you to sprint as well. Any last words of wisdom you want to share with people? Today? No, shine bright, right? That's what this whole thing is about. <laughs> Woohoo! And, and I think it's, it's letting your light shine even in the, even in when things aren't going well, when you've got layers on top of you, when you've got cats and dogs coming out of the sky, don't worry about how bright it's shining. Don't worry about getting the shine perfect. Just let it shine anyway. Yeah, self-love. Always, always, always back to the self-love. <laughs> I love myself. I love myself. <laughs> I love myself. For those that can't see, I'm literally <laughs> massaging my heart, and this is this has been one of my healing exercises. Yeah, oh, only been one of my healing exercises. That's nice. Massage the heart and go. I love myself. I love myself, and I wear I wear a medallion under here, and and I very frequently uh, from Richard Gordon, who's been on the show, a, a, a great healer, and I very frequently will tap that medallion, which is basically at my heart center, and say, I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. Oh, I love and that. And it is the greatest gift in the world to give that to give that to yourself Mm, all right so (laughs) for everyone out there this is michael sandler and cj lou from the fired up with cj show saying be well have you have fun love yourself love yourself love yourself and step forward no matter what and shine bright It means so much to me that you're listening to the show and would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show 
or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support, love, and blessings.